you know anytime we get opportunity to come into the presence of the Lord like I keep saying it is another occasion of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit where he is here to soothe our hearts those whose hearts are broken those who are going through all kinds of challenges when we are coming into the presence of the Lord just believe that the Holy Spirit is here to touch all of us amen would you please put your hands together for Jesus amen wherever you are Oh, hallelujah. Amen. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are highly lifted up. There is no one like you. Say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah, you are highly lifted up. Hallelujah, Hosanna. 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 Hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah, Hosanna, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, it's a sound of victory. Hallelujah. 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 Let the sound of rejoicing. Let the sound of rejoicing fill me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a sign of freedom. It's a sign of freedom. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Oh. Let the sound. Let the sound of rejoicing fill me. He has done for me. He has done for me. What no man has done. What no man has done. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. It's a sound of freedom. What no man has done. What no man has done. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. This is a sound of freedom. This is a sign of freedom. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Eh. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Let that sound of rejoice and fill this house. What can I say? The fragrance of my worship. Rose up to the Father. Rejoices, thunders, lightnings. Now the response to my worship. The fragrance of my worship. Rose up to the Father. Rejoices, thunders, earthquakes. What the response to Sing it one more time. The fragrance of my worship. The fragrance of my worship. Rose up to the I see his thunderings and words. What a response to my words. The fragrance of my words. The fragrance of my words. Goes out to the Father. And God says, Tender and quick. What a response to my words. Tell this fragrance. Come on. Let it turn to fire. My worship is my weapon. My worship is my weapon. This is how. This is how I win my battle. First is for fragrance. First is for fragrance. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship. In my worship is my work. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. First is for fragrance. First is for fragrance. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my work. My worship is my work. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. First is for fragrance. Then it turned to fire. Then it turned to fire. My worship. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. Come on, say. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke, the smoke of my worship release upon the air. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship, breathe me up on the air. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship, the smoke of my worship, breathe me up on the air. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. This is how I win. This is how I win. Win, win. This is how I win. The smoke of my worship. Win, win. First it was fragrance. First it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. First it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. First it was fragrance. Then it 
turn to fire. I worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. What can I say? Come on. This is how I win. 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 Victory is ours today. Come on. This is how I win. This is how I win. We win through our present worship. This is how I win. This is how I win. This is how we win. Win, 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 win. This is how I win. This is how I win. Win, win. This is how I 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 win. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship. Really upon the earth. The smoke of my worship. The smoke of my worship. Really upon the earth. This is how I win. Win. This is how I win. This is how I win. Smoke of my worship. This is how I win, win, win. The smoke of my worship. Really upon the earth. First it was fragrance. Fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my weapon. My worship is my weapon. This is how I win my battle. This is how I win my battle. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, your presence in church today, do you know that the enemy didn't want you to come? You know, so anytime we are able to appear before the Lord, the devil is mesmerized. Yes. He just doesn't know what to do about these people. Because our praise and worship is our weapon. And so from your heart, we want to encourage you to lift up your voice and sing like there's never tomorrow again. Of my worship, really, upon the earth. Glory due unto your name. There is no God like you. There is no God like you. Because there is no one like you. Only you are holy.
Holy you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. For there's no
no one else would do. No one else would do. No one else would do. No one else can take your place. No one else can take your place. No one else can take your place. To feel the warmth of your embrace. To feel the warmth of your embrace. Help me find my way. Help me find my way. Bring me back to you. Bring me back to you.
voice and worship him. Come on, did it take a second? Yahweh, 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 Yah
Rafa. He is also called Jehovah Nisi. He has various names trying to capture the dimensions of the Lord God Almighty. But even these words are not enough to describe who he is. Thank you, Lord. We worship before you. We glorify your name. We magnify you, Lord. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, that you are not like us. Who is fallible? Who is weak in every sense of the word? But your word says in our weakness, you are our strength. We thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. Would you please put your hands together for Jesus and be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. of God. Amen. Are you ready to know him more and more? To draw closer to him? Is he truly everything that you want to know? So this morning, we are here once again to receive a seed from God. Last week, we receive a seed in so many ways. And the seed comes in so many different ways. And so this morning, I want you to prepare your heart, prepare your mind, be focused, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you because he is ready to speak to us. Amen. We are equipping, empowering, and also investing. Hallelujah. And we believe that women are also called to preach. Can I hear amen? Amen. 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 So this morning, we have a vessel that God has prepared to speak through her to us. She's anointed with the word of God and the mighty hand of God is upon her. So without wasting much time, I will call our dear sister, Mrs. Linda Ashia Kusi to give the word. God bless you all. Amen.
thank you. We thank you for you've been our host. You remain the King and the Lord of glory from now and forever. We say your name is El Leon. Your name is El Shaddai. Your name is El Olam. And today we say you are our Nisi for you are our banner. Father, I bring myself before you, Lord. Take anything away that is not of you. Father, we want more of you. I want more of you, oh Lord. As a vessel, Lord, I want more of you and less of me. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank the Lord of hosts for making today a wonderful day. When I woke up, I opened my curtain and it was raining. And I said, this is the dew of glory. Amen. We thank the board of this church. For if you go to other churches, it's only the senior pastor who mounts the pulpit. But today... I'm thanking our Papa, William Ansre Buampon, Pastor Margaret, Pastor Jenfi, all the ministers and all the workers in this church for giving me this opportunity to take Pastor's pulpit today. Amen. Amen. Today, we are praying that we wouldn't be like those in Matthew who have blocked their ears and closed their eyes because they don't want to see or hear the word of God. We pray that the Lord will bless our, our eyes, will bless our ears, so that we'll be able to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. And bear it in mind that yesterday is gone is history. Tomorrow is a mystery we are looking for and we ask God to show us the way. But today... It's present and it's a gift God has given unto us. Because it's present, God has a gift for you today. And that gift is preserving the seed for growth. Hallelujah. Preserving the seed that you receive for growth. Matthew chapter 13 verse 3 to 9. Then he told them about many things in parables saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed... Some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still... Other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Preserving the seed for growth is not something you've not heard before. We've got a Bible teacher, a pastor, a prophet in the house who actually dissipate the word for us. So Matthew, he has done justice to it already. So I've just picked pieces of what he has taught and combined to bring to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Whilst I was reading and following our purpose teaching, there was some things I noticed. And one was that the farmer, whilst he went to scatter, he did not discriminate. He threw the seeds. When the Bible used the word scatter, it means it goes everywhere. So the farmer did not discriminate. He scattered the seed so that the rocky lands, the lands with thorns, the good soils will receive the seed as well. And the Lord does not play favoritism. And somebody will say, oh, this, this, this woman is blessed because maybe he's been receiving the word. That's why I'm not prospering. No. He does not play favoritism. 
The word we've been receiving in this church, we all receive it. So God let us spread the word so that every human being on earth will hear. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 9 tells us that God is patient. He doesn't want any of his children to perish. So the word has been said in Juria to Samaria from the ends of the world, from Buramu to Bento, everywhere to wherever you live, the word is being shared. Hallelujah. Amen. He keeps his promise. He doesn't want to lose any soul. So there is equal opportunity for everyone to receive the word. The word that pastor has been preaching since I joined this church, the people I joined this church with, they've all been receiving the same word. The same word. The same seed has been scattered by our papa. To the rocky lands, to the lands with thorns, to the good lands. Hallelujah. Somebody will say, I didn't get an opportunity to hear the word of God. But Romans chapter 1 verse 20 tells us that from creation, God's mighty power has been, and his nature has been revealed through his creation. So if you see even when a woman gets pregnant with two, with an, an, an egg and a sperm, and the baby grows in the womb, the baby comes up comes out of the womb and two days the baby will be jumping around. You see how wonderful and marvelous God is. That is a seed God has given unto us. Hallelujah. So there is no discrimination. He does not play favoritism. He wants everyone to receive the word so that they do not perish. Hallelujah. Before I had my second son, through the intimacy of myself and my husband, I received a seed. And I, I wasn't feeling well, so I said, ah, let me do a test. I did a test and then it said pregnant. Oh, I was happy. I was over the moon. I was jubilating up and down. And I thank God. I said, God, I thank you for this seed. Because my life, I wanted to give back, papa, 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 and go. So when the seed came, I was so happy. I rejoiced and I thanked the, God, the, the Lord Almighty. I was still in the first trimester, three months along the line, and I had a miscarriage. I was confused. I said, ah, but God, you gave me this seed. What, what happened? I was contemplating. Look, I had a lot of questions. Where, where did the seed go? Is it that it didn't get into my womb? Or something is in my womb? Or my body did not accept the, the seed? So I, so I even went to a consultant and I was asking, lot of, I said I had a first baby. So why is it that this, I was confused. Sometimes God gives us seed. Today you are receiving a seed. Are you ready to accept it? Are you ready for it to be implanted in your mind and in your soul today? I couldn't preserve the seed. Or oh, my womb couldn't preserve the seed. So it didn't grow for a fruit to bear a fruit. Hallelujah. Today I pray, I pray that everybody receive the seed and it will be implanted in their minds, in their hearts and it will be rooted so that growth will take place for fruit bearing to occur in the name of Jesus. Matthew 13, 18 to 19. Now listen to the explanation of the parable. About the farmer planting seed. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message. Today you are here hearing the message about a kingdom and don't understand it. Then the evil one comes and snatch away the seed that was planted in their hearts. The evil one has been chasing and looking after our seed from Genesis to Revelation. 
I said revelation is finished. But he has come out of revelation. And he's still chasing the seed. The seed in our womb. The seed, the word that we receive. He's still chasing because we are the seeds of Abraham. We have to be a letter. Because the enemy, he works 24-7 with more members. Planning and orchestrating. Building new instruments to take seed from our hearts. From the hearts of our children. We got to stay alert. Hallelujah. Understanding. Understanding. Understanding is very important. Somebody I know bought a washing machine to clean things from your stained clothes. And the daughter wrote something on a sheet of paper and said, Mommy, I want to rub this, so I've put it in the washing machine. Hallelujah. Understanding is very important. If you do not understand, the Bible we just read said, the devil himself, he doesn't send his subordinates. He himself, he come to snatch the word from your heart because you didn't understand what pastor preached about and you didn't bother to go home and read about it. You didn't bother to discuss with anybody. So he will come and take it away from your heart. Hallelujah. Today the word is coming. I pray that you get understanding. Hallelujah. There are some practical things we can do to gain understanding in order to preserve the seed we are receiving today. If somebody is happy to hear that, give me a wave. Give me a wave. Practical ways to keep the seed, preserve the seed, protect the seed. As I couldn't protect the one God gave to me. Today we are praying that the seed that God is given to us will be able to protect it. The one thing we can do is to hear. Hearing. Romans chapter 10 says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into all the earth. Their words to the end of the world. So the word has been preached. Even since I came to this church, the word that has been preached, the seed that has been scattered. I wouldn't say I've not heard anything. It's a matter of hearing. Hearing the word. Now, there are a lot of ways you can hear the word. When I wake up in the morning and I don't have time to read, I just put the Bible audio on and it will start reading. It's a form of hearing. You can listen to it. You can go back to YouTube and listen to Pastor's sermon. It's a form of hearing. So, if you miss anything in church, you can go back and listen and hear. So hearing is one step getting closer to understanding. Hallelujah. You also read. Revelation 1 3 said God blesses the one who reads the word of his prophecy to the church. And he blesses all who listens to its message and obey what it says. For the time is near. So reading is also part of it. You go home, you sit down, you read the Bible. Nowadays, I'm gaining a lot of knowledge from reading when the Bible study coordinators, when we meet, we read and then everybody bring their explanation. Through the reading, sometimes we read and say, ah, this one, I've read it before. But it brings out something in the Bible comes alive whenever you sit down to read. So reading also helps. And he says you have to study. Hmm. Pastor says something, it's a revelation. I've been checking the Bible, concordance everywhere to find what Pastor said, if it's, I can find it anywhere. It is a revelation from God. He said the word becomes a seed only when you understand it. So if you do not study, you do not read, the word is just like in Kwanansi story. You just hear it and brush it off. But understanding is what will make the seed start growing. It will die and start growing and be rooted in your heart. Hallelujah. So we need to study. Study the word. You can get that from Joshua 1.8a. Study this book of instruction continuously. And the people of Berah were more open-minded 
than those in Thessalonica. And they listened eagerly to Paul's message. They searched the scriptures day after day to see if Paul and Silas were teaching the truth. We pray that the spirit that upon the people of Beria will fall upon us today. That we will be able to become steady, steady students of the word. We will be steady to understand whatever we have heard. Hallelujah. We need to memorize the word. Memorize. Memorize. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 18 to 19. Place the words on your heart. Get them deep into your soul. Tie them on your hands and forehead. As a reminder, teach them to your children. Talk about them wherever you are. Sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk about them from the time you get up to the time you go back to sleep. Inscribe them on the doorpost of your gate. Hallelujah. The doorpost of your gate. So that you will live a long time and your children with you. On the soil that God promised to give your ancestors. If the word is on your wrist. Wherever you are, if the word is in your heart, you're going to talk about it everywhere. If it is on your doorpost and somebody comes with gossip, with by biting, with anything, you are not going to condone or help the person to continue because the word is there. When you are speaking to people, when you are advising and you've memorized the word, it is that same word that will use to encourage, to support somebody. Hallelujah. Memorizing and meditation meditating. So you meditate to hear something from God. So if you've memorized about Matthew 13 and you want God to give you proper explanation, that is when you meditate. Hallelujah. Joshua 1 8 B says, meditate on it day and night. So you'll be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. So meditating has an advantage. You will prosper and you succeed with the business you are doing, with your schoolwork, in your relationship. It will be successful if you are meditating on the word of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we say we meditate and we don't hear anything. Meditation is very important. But before we do that, the voice in us has to be silent for God's voice to come. The Bible tells me that be still and know. It is in the stillness, in the presence of God. Once you've memorized something, that is when you know. That is when you know the path to take. That is when you know the meaning of the things you are going through. That is when God himself will reveal himself with you. And you enter into a deeper relationship. A deeper realms with God. And at that point, your voice voice is silent. That is when you hear the still voice of God. Be still and know during meditation. It is in the stillness that we will know, that we will understand and hear the voice of God. Concerning the problems, concerning the stubbornness of children we are in in this generation, concerning the things we are going through, it is too being still and knowing that he alone can solve what we are going through. Hallelujah. So to conclude understanding, understanding is very important. Memorizing is also very important. Look, the enemy is chasing this seed because he knows the power in the word. He knows when you hear, you study, you read, you memorize and meditate. The power you have, you walk with boldness in the spirit. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. The enemy, he is not afraid of how you pray. 
the strategies you have, the techniques you have, how you speak in tongues, the different ways of tongues you are able to speak. He is not afraid of all those things. You remember when Jesus was on the mountain, the only thing Jesus used to rebuke the enemy, he didn't bind, he didn't cast the devil out, he didn't shoot, pay the devil. No, the Bible said, he said it is written and he was able to say that because he had meditated the word was deep in his heart it was rooted in his heart so he said it is written that is the only power that can condemn that can bring the enemy to a stand so in our lives hallelujah it is only through the word I was searching the Bible to see if Jesus did anything apart from saying it is written. Because sometimes we break. We break. We break. We break. But the man we are following didn't do that. He used the word. So it is good for us. Look, if the enemy comes and tempts you and you've not memorized any word in your heart. The word has not been rooted in your heart. You say, hey, I bind you, I bind. Because you do not remember any scripture. Nothing will come. You say, hey, hey, what is happening? But just memorize one word. The enemy will flee. You stop blowing. Kabe, kabo, kabe, kabe. He will still be there. Kabe, that, hey, you are do, clapping. Jump, he will be there. Jesus used the word, it is written. Where is your word written? The word has to be written in your heart. Sometimes you can open the Bible. By the time you are opening the Bible, he's holding your neck. You say, yeah, 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 yeah. The word has to be written on our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians said, say, so walk in him. In other words, leave this reality all day. If you memorize it, it's part of your life. Somebody calls you and you, my children, whenever they bring anything up, I'll say, so if you go to the Bible, hey. now Sergio told me, mommy, you know, when I grow up, I can't be looking after my children. I'll bring them to you so that you look after them. I said, ah, so what will you give to me? He said, mm, I think I'll build you a church and get members in the church for you because every day you are quoting and preaching to, in this house to us. So you need... A church with members in it. Hallelujah. We speak the word. We walk with the word. The Bible says in Deuteronomy that put it on your forehead. If it's on your forehead and you are walking through the world, somebody sees you. He sees that eh, this one is different. Your behavior, your demeanor, do things differently. If you have the word, the way you do things will be different. Hallelujah. One of the ways for us to also understand is to be deeply rooted. Minister Griffiths, to be deeply rooted. Deeply rooted in the word. Deeply rooted. When you hear the word, let your roots grow down into him. And let your life be built on him. Then your faith will grow stronger. In truth, you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Rooted and built up in him. Strengthened in faith as you were taught. And overflowing with thankfulness. Hallelujah. So as you've been taught. You've received. You've heard and you've studied. Leave it. Leave it. How are we going to leave it? We leave it because we are rooted in Jesus Christ, who is our foundation. If you are rooted in Jesus, he is the word. He was the word in the beginning. So if you are rooted in him, you are the word. The word is in you and you are in him. Hallelujah. You know when the seed gets into your heart and it starts Growing, it dies and it starts growing. There are two types of growth. It grows up and it grows down. We only see the growing up, the trees and the stem and the leaves. That's the only thing we see. But you see, as the seed is being planted in your heart, it goes down into. 
to the root. That is when it gets the nutrient. It gets an anchor. It gets the strength from God. So when you are rooted and the trouble come, the temptation come, marital problems come, misunderstanding come, misbehaving children come, that is when the word you are rooted in will spring up and you say unto the Lord, in oceans deep, my faith will stand and I'll call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves, the waves of trouble, the waves of sickness, the waves of everything going on in my life. And when the ocean rise, I'll rest in your embrace. If you are deeply rooted, trouble come. Look, Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to 10 tells us that because of our misunderstanding, we are not understanding, we are not able to honor God with our lives. As a wife, I'm not honoring God in my marriage because sometimes I do not understand my husband. He will say this and I'll say this. We do not understand our children. They say they are having a pack, a party in the pack. You say, don't go. They will say, no, mommy, it's just a party. We don't understand them and they don't understand them. Shortly, they will take their bag and say, because you don't understand me, they are leaving. We ask God to give us understanding so that we'll be able to stand and use the word in times of trial. A lot of people are leaving their marriages because of misunderstanding. Look, I went here. He said, no, I saw your car here. I was with this woman. Oh, misunderstanding. God have mercy. No, I've taken a stand when my husband... My husband speaks in parables. So it's very difficult to live with him. But I always ask for the grace of God. Something that is open. He will say, you will bring a quote. Use big English. Me too, I've not been to school. And then I'll say, ah, but you said this. And then he'll come back and say, ah, so you don't know English, Linda. And so that misunderstanding. Now I've come to understand that when these things are going, I'll say, God. Give me deeper understanding. You know, it's not easy. Oh. And the children are also following. They speak like their dad. And me too, I don't understand. I went to school in Ghana. I don't understand. Philemon would say, ah, mommy, get a dictionary. But I always ask God to give me deeper understanding so that I'll be able to relate and live with them with understanding for the glory of God to be seen in our life, for growth to happen so that I'll be able to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Amen. Be on your feet. Hallelujah. Fill me up, Lord, with your word. Fill me up till I overflow. I, I want to run, run over. I want to run over. Fill me up with your word, Lord. Till I overflow. I want to run over. I want to run over. Till I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over. Tell me what we're understanding, understanding, Lord. Till I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run
God. Incline my heart, Lord. Pray. Father, incline my heart. Incline my heart. With your word, oh Lord. in the world 
We are asking the Father you to lead and take away all forms of distraction from our lives, mighty God. So that when the word comes, it will be deeply rooted in our hearts. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. May all the saints say amen and be seated. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. My understanding of this quotation is when we give wholeheartedly, financially to the kingdom of God, in return, he will help us in manifold. It might not be physically money, it might be through healing. He will be opening doors for you, blessing your children, doing academically well. And so let's come and give wholeheartedly to help the kingdom of God. Amen. Now the red one is for my friend and the blue one for tithes, please. You alone are worthy, Lord. And blue one to be praised and adored, you alone are worthy, Lord. To be praised and adored, you've been faithful, Lord, from the ages past. can contain. Lord, I pray that your blessing will extend to each one of us so that in return we will be a blessing to you.